The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And it is to determine the number one contender for the Wrestling Generation Championship. Making his way to the ring first, from Germany, Whatever Trevor. All right, so to clarify, this is for the number one contender for next week's championship match. We already have our championship matches for this week's set. So these number one contenders will challenge for the title next week. I think we're going to get back to trying to do title defenses most weeks. So this is number one contender for next week. opponent making his way to the ring from the farmlands of Canada the Spud is it hashtag Spud Stud or hashtag Spud Dud but either way we're cat jamming The Spud picking up a big win in last week's triple threat match, putting him into number one contendership. Contendership, apparently. Double contenderships there. Either the Spud or whatever Trevor will come out as number one contender for the Wrestling Generation Championship and will challenge whoever the champion is after tonight, next week. There is the bell, and they go up to tie up, and Spud just shoves Trevor off there for a sec. Grabs him for the gut wrench and slams him down. Spud's staying on him. Punches to the head. Trevor really throwing those hits in there. Spud rolling him over. Throwing the forearms into his head. Kick to the back. It's simple but effective. Grabs Trevor in a submission hold. Trying to make him tap here. Trevor back to his feet. Goes for a swing, the spud cuts him off. Double underhook. Oh, what is this? Ooh, nice twist and cutter off the double underhook. He goes for a pin. One, only a one count. Very innovative maneuver by the spud. But Trevor having no problem getting out of it. There's a dragon screw to take him down. Trevor's getting fired up, but spud's right there to scoop him up. Thought he was looking for the fall away slam, but he's going to drop him face first on the top rope. Slams the arm. Little dance and celebration. Spud always finding time to get his boogie on. Boogie on? I don't know. Sometimes these are the words that come out of my mouth. Need a spoiler chat on Discord for Wednesday? I would put it in there, but Wednesday, like, the whole... Two. Here is your winner and the number one contender for the Wrestling Generation Championship, 
The Spud. Big victory for the Spud. Didn't think that match was going to end as soon as it did. But it did. But it did. The following contest is the Women's Level Up Rumble. Every 60 seconds, a new wrestler will enter the ring until only one remains earning this week's Level Up. Making her way to the ring first as entrant number one from Tacoma, Washington, Bob Licious. Bob coming in at spot number one. Not always the best spot to be in. It doesn't mean you're counted out whatsoever. Just the hardest place. It's, it's an uphill battle for Boblicious. The spider web effect. Oh yeah, the hair. Yeah, I love that. It's cool. It's a good look. Making her way to the ring next. As entrant number two. From the Netherlands, Aurora Jade. So we've got number one and number two. Number one in the ring, number one in my heart. Now let's fight. There you go, Roz. But Guyler volunteers to be first. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Here we go, the rumble begins. Who's gonna earn this week's level up? Bob starting things off with a German suplex on Aurora Jade. Clubbing blows to the back of Jade. Getting it right back up to her feet. Bob's continuing the onslaught. Nice bridging suplex into the leg drop. Jade has had no opportunity to get in any offense yet as Bob continues. Grabbing the hold. It's going to be smart of Bob to try and eliminate Jade as fast as possible. Maybe before entrant number three makes their way to the ring. Am I covering the clock? I never even realized. There we go. You can kind of see it above me. Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Lana Del Grey will be number three. Lana sliding in. As Jade starts to get some offense in on Bob. Instead of getting super fired up, Lana's going right over the corner for a breather. Apparently that run down the ramp took a lot out of her. But she also takes Jade off of her feet. Ooh, nice attack on Aurora. Bob getting up from the apron. Looks like we might have people on each side of Aurora Jade doing damage here. Both wrestlers focused on her. Lana wasting no time though going after Bob. Jade's right there to capitalize. Ooh, nice slam sending Lana face first into the map. Bob's got Jade. For the scoop up into a power slam 
as entry number four is four seconds away. Jackknife Janet making her way to the ring as entry number four. Double ham choke drop on Lana who grabs the lower rope and goes onto the apron for a rest. Jackknife takes down Bob. Big kick from Jade on Lana. Janet, nasty clothesline. Jade with a nice dragon suplex on Lana Del Grey before turning her attention to Bob Licious. Bob dropped on the top rope. We're gonna have another person in this match before you know it and still no eliminations. Lana getting Janet back to her feet, the spinning forearm. And we are this close from entrant number five. Two, one. Minx Jinx will arrive as entrant number five. This is half of the match now. Five out of 10. Bob dropping Lana Del Grey. Minx now focused on Lana. Snap suplex takes her down quickly. Ooh, big forearm. Minx working the legs now. Bob has Janet scooped up. Nice power slam. Bob going for the same thing on Lana, but Lana takes out the leg from behind. Jade with a kick to the midsection of Minx. Big kick from Bob taking down Lana. We're starting to have a hard time uh, focusing on what's going on. We're about to have six in the ring as Lana Del Grey is pounding on the face of Bob Licious. Jay, our Minx dropping Janet as Kim Phoenix arrives at number six. Phoenix sliding into the ring. Now we have pure anarchy. No eliminations yet and six people in the ring currently. I am shocked that everybody is still in this match. Phoenix tossed into the corner. Janet taken down. Lana going up. Where is Lana going with this? Looking for a target. You do not want to sit up on the turnbuckle for that long. It looks like both Janet and Bob have rolled under the bottom rope to try and get a breather. Lana with the double axe handle off the top rope, clubbing Bob in the back. We're getting really close to having seven. I don't know if I've seen seven people in the ring at the same time in one of these rumbles yet. This will be a first for this season. Ruthless Roz will be our number seven. I think the ring can only hold eight at a time. I think, so someone's gonna get eliminated soon. You can already see the game slowing down a little bit, just rendering who's here. Oh, Minx Jinx sent to the outside by Aurora Jade. There's our first elimination. Bob has Roz, no! Bob and Roz are on each other while Kim has eliminated Jackknife Janet. We're down to five. We go from no eliminations to back to back. Bob with a nasty pile driver on Ruthless Roz as Phoenix and Jade team up to send Lana out of the ring. And just like that, we now only have four active wrestlers in the match. It's just boom, boom, boom. Our number one and number two entrants are still in the ring though, which is pretty impressive. This match is already half over. And our next entrant is coming down in three, two, one. Virginia Mock at number eight. As Aurora Jade is forced onto the top rope by Kim Phoenix and tossed out of the ring. 
Phoenix with three eliminations in this Rumble already. Out of the four people that have been eliminated. She won last week's Rumble. Is she here to tear it up? DDT on Raws as Bob is focused on Virginia Mock. I believe, actually, that Phoenix is currently the highest ranked wrestler in the women's division. Or the highest level, not ranked, but the highest leveled wrestler in the women's division. Which has never been the case in the past. But between an, an energy level up and a Royal Rumble level up last week, it put her into the top spot. Raw's taking down Mock. As Bob is focused on Phoenix, Bob is the number one entrant and still in this rumble, looking to eliminate Kim Phoenix. And number nine, Bronco Lily is making her way down the ramp. We have only one more wrestler set to enter this rumble. Phoenix tossed towards the ropes, but Bob's in the way. Mock going after Bronco Lily. The team of Baba Razi teaming up on Kim Phoenix, it looks like. They're finally working together as Raz. Oh, Virginia Mock. Oh, Raz eliminating Phoenix. Mock eliminating Lily. Lily had a very short showing in this rumble. But now Bob turning again on Raz. What is Bob doing? Hitting the other side, going around the ring in a big boot to the face. Raj just caught the big boot from Bob Licious. The tag team turns on each other yet again. Now Bob focused on Mock as our final entrant is about to make their way into the ring. Katie Peters slays at number one as Bob Licious tossed Virginia Mock to the outside. Bob Rousey, the only ones in the ring right now. But now KPS is here. Bob, our number one entrant, makes it to the final three. That alone is impressive. But does she have enough to claim victory over both the Shark Slayer and her own tag team partner? Bob is not, <laughs> not keeping any alliances alive right now. Wrecking both of our wrestlers. And the boos ring out from the crowd as Roz is taking Bob down. Before turning her attention to Katie Peters' slays. Katie getting quickly back up to her feet. Roz there waiting for her. Scoops her up. Taking her down. The drama. You can't write this stuff. You can't. You absolutely cannot. You never know what's going to happen on this show. It's crazy. Oh, my God. Is it going to be down to Baba Razi's the final two? Raz has KPS up. Bob is not stepping in to help. KPS has been eliminated. It is Bob and Raz as the final two in our level up rumble. You cannot write drama this good. The only tag team in wrestling generation right now is at odds with each other, trying to earn this week's level up. Raz scooping Bob up. Face first on the top rope. <laughs> Mommy, sorry. I can only imagine what it's like over at Bob and Roz's right now. The trash talking in person has to be outrageous. <laughs> Bob with the kick to the face of Roz. Scoops her back up. There's a clubbing blow to the back. Will Bob not only best her tag team partner, but also do what we've seen nobody do yet this season? Oh, no. Oh, no. The low blow from Boblicious. Hits the ropes. Will Bob go from entry number one to rumble winner? 
Somebody sleeping in the car tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Raz starting to fight back. Has Bob up. Oh, there's planted into the ring. Super kick to the face. Raz getting Bob over to the ropes. Is this going to be it? Is this going to be it? Bye-bye! Here is the winner of the Women's Level Up Rumble, Ruthless Raz! One of the most exciting Level Up Rumbles we've had yet in Season 2. So much drama in there. Absolutely crazy. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring first, from Indianapolis, Indiana, Brendo Commando. Brando Commando on the way to the ring. In all his movie star glory. Boy got some thighs. Oh yeah, he's 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 ready. He's ready. opponent making his way to the ring from Boston, Australia, Avatar X. One of the longer intros we've got. <laughs> you can see Brando getting out of the ring over there, making room for his opponent to enter the ring. I don't believe these two have faced off in singles competition yet, so this should be interesting. The man from the future looks particularly focused tonight. He's had a couple, uh, couple wins so far this season, couple losses. But he's got to start climbing that ladder if he wants another shot at the Wrestling Generation Championship. A former champion himself, in season one at least. Had a nice little run with the belt. Here we go. Brando Commando, Avatar X on opposite sides of the ring. There is the bell. And this contest is underway. Avatar X coming out swinging. Oh, a nice combination on Brando. 
Brando starting to fight back. His own combo. There's a nice arm drag. Taking down the man from the future. He's going to step over into a single-legged monkey flip. As soon as he gets Avatar X back to his feet, he comes out swinging and a DDT on Brando Commando. Quick cover. One. Only a one count. Still very early in this match, but a DDT can catch you off guard. Tie up yet again. Brando now fighting back. The chops. He's got him from behind. Oh! Nice takedown. You can see the technical skill of Brando right here. As he takes Avatar X on a ride around the ring. But X sliding out of that and sweeping the leg. Before stomping on the hand. X another technical wrestler in his own right. Here's the cover on Brando Commando for another one. Gets him back to his feet. There's the grab from behind. Ooh, lays in the forearm to the back. And yet again, driving him down from behind before stomping on the face. Those metallic boots are going to do some damage that way. What's up, Momlander? How are you? Hurricane run on Brando Commando. Avatar X getting pumped up. There's the elbow. Doing all right, doing all right. We are doing our weekly uh, wrestling generation online league here. Brando fighting out of the corner. Going into Avatar X. Oh, the full Nelson takedown. Which one are you? I'm neither. This is a completely AI-controlled match. There's the double-arm DDT from Brando Commando. Here's the pin. Is that going to be enough to put Avatar X away? Here is your winner, Brando Commando. Brando Commando hitting that double arm DDT out of nowhere, taking down Avatar X. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is to determine the number one contender for the WG Women's Championship. Making her way to the ring first, from Oxford, England, Virginia Mock. Virginia Mock making her way to the ring. Oh, jolly good evening, Miss Mock. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if I should do the accent. Laura might yell at me. <laughs> Perfect. That wasn't even me trying. That was, that was not even... That was like a barely, barely, barely leaning into it. Just realized tomorrow is Mario Day. That is true. Tomorrow is Mario Day. Yeah, tomorrow's Mario Day, and we'll be live with Fortnite. It's the new Fortnite season. You know, it's fine. Who will face Virginia Mock for potential number one contenderhood? Who will it be? And 
her opponent. Making her way to the ring from Flagstaff, Arizona, Jackknife Janet. The Arizona Dirtbag arrives. Jackknife Janet once again getting close to that championship. But she's got to go through Virginia Mock first. Of course, she brought the nice bike. Which is, you know, her usual bike. It's interesting how they fix some of the physics things from 2K19. And yet other physics things are broken that were working just fine. It's so strange. You never know where this game is going to go. Mock in one corner, Janet in the other. There's the bell and there's the tie up. We are naming a new number one contender who will go on to face whoever the champion will be after this week on next week's show. Mock coming out swinging. I say swinging, but it's really a bevy of kicks. And then attacking the leg of Jackknife Janet. Staying on that leg, that's a smart move. Pick a body part and weaken it. Nice chops before going to the head. Mock taking down Janet. She is firmly in control of this match right now. Might be going for a cover. There it is. One. One count on Janet. Thought Mock was going to get her back to her feet, but no, she's going for the knees to the head. Keeping her as close to the mat as possible. Again, Mock very smart. Even though a rookie in wrestling generation, showing the experience of years. These are all veteran maneuvers. Keeping Jackknife Janet down. Janet with the block. Looks to be finally turning things around a little bit. Shifting the momentum. There's the chop. Sending Mock against the ropes. Nice back elbow takes her down. And here's the cover from Janet. Only a one count on Mock. That's her first offense of the match. She's going to need to do more if she wants to take Virginia Mock down. She's looking to the crowd for a little encouragement. And you know they're going to be on her side in this match. Mock might be holding her own, but she is not concerned with the opinions of the audience. That's for sure. Stomp to the chest of Jackknife Janet. Gets the arm there. What is this? The arm wrapped around the head into a torture rack. But there's a rope break, which breaks the submission hold. Virginia Mock firing up with those clotheslines. There's the leg lariat taking her down. It's a nice combo. That's going to shift the momentum back in her favor strongly. Here's the cover on Janet. One, two, two count. Two count on the Arizona Dirtbag. She is one count away from becoming our new number one contender. Goes for the lift. Janet fights out of it. The hook. Small package pile driver. Nasty move on Virginia Mock. She's going to be feeling that when she wakes up in the morning. Janet with the cover on Mock. One, two, a two count on Virginia Mock. I can sense a near end to this match, but I have no idea who will come out victorious. Janet with the hold on Virginia Mock. The twos in chat resounding. 
as we get a lot of near falls here. Look at that assault from Virginia Mock before the cover. One, two. That was a two and a half. That was a two and a half. Very near fall. Virginia Mock hopping into the corner for a moment to catch her breath. That was so close. That was so close. Mock's got to hit with something a little harder. Janet coming back with a nice bevy. Oh, no. Oh, no. This might be the jackknife powerbomb. This could be it for Virginia Mock. There it is. Here's the cover. Will that put her away? One, two. Here is your winner and the number one contender for the WG Women's Championship, Jackknife, Janet. And all of a sudden, it feels like season one again. We have the Spud and Jackknife Janet as our number one contenders for each championship. It's like days of old here. Days of old. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Dude Grabowski. The twitching shirt himself, yeah. That's what I mean, like when it comes to they fixed some of the physics things and then broke others. Like that shirt worked just fine in 2K19 and now it's a whole issue. There are certain attire things that just look weird now. Like uh, on Kim Phoenix, the shirt she wears and used to wear, the, when she used to wear it, it looked normal and fine. And now it has like, it almost looks like it has two cutouts in the back. Like it digs into her back or something. It's very weird. Yeah, he's flexing his left pec really fast he's super good at that And his opponent making his way to the ring right after looking at himself in the mirror. The Baron. Here comes the Baron. Dude can have a beer while Baron makes his way to the ring. This is true. Dude might have a twitching shirt, but it does bring the whole room together. Or the outfit, if you will. Baron taking his time, soaking in the applause. He's a car at a gas station right now. This is his fuel. 
This is how he fills up for the week. It gets him through his match and gets him through until the next time he can be on TV. He needs it. Just like I need this every week. The Baron needs his applause. He does miss his pyro. I miss his pyro. I think we all miss his pyro, honestly. Looks like Tommy Dreamer. A little bit, to be honest. There's the bell. Baron and Dude, two guys who are very familiar with each other. Baron starting things off with a DDT. Baron has been having a hard time finding his footing in season two. And Grabowski's been on a bit of a rough patch himself. So both people trying to pick themselves up by the bootstraps and get into the swing of things for season two. But only one will do it tonight. Grabowski sending Baron into the corner. Kick to the leg. And a DDT returned. There's the receipt for you, Baron. You gave me a DDT. Well, I got one for you now. Grabowski taking a moment to rock out with a little air guitar. Can't blame the man. I mean, Baron looks like he's at a concert too, so it's only appropriate. Grabowski continuing to stomp on that arm before going for the cover. Oh, not even a one. I was ready to count it, but not even a one. Still got plenty of match to go, it seems. Nice knee drop. Getting Baron back to his feet before going for that assault. Good right hand. Not enough to take him all the way down, but it puts him on a knee. What a combo from the dude. Keeping it rolling. Baron says no, though. Grabbing the leg. There's the trip. Oh, no. But he needed to showboat. He had to satiate his hunger for attention. And that left him open for offense, as it often does. Into the ropes he goes. Baron swinging and miss. Or sorry. Grabowski swings and misses. Goes for a punch there. Baron stopping it. Scoops him up and takes him down. He's going for the arm good spot to target. <laughs> the arm good spot to target. Are they going shopping before the cooking, before the, the bake-off? There's the elbow drop on Grabowski. And take a bow. Here's a leg. Baron with the cover on dude. One, two... Two count on Grabowski. Baron taking a moment to catch his breath. Follows up or aiming to hit him in the arm. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he is going for the arm. Good spot to target. There we go. I, uh, I placed the punctuation in the wrong part of that sentence when I read it. Baron goes up and over for the Tornado DDT. A nice running Tornado DDT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I was just processing that line a little differently. Drop kick to the back of Dude. There's another kick. Dude rolling on it. Oh! Grabowski with the boss man slam out of nowhere. Holds it for the pin. It looked like they were both dead. But dude holding that cover. Got the two count. And he goes into the 7-10 split. Looking to make the Baron tap. Is this going to be enough? Is this going to be enough? Baron does not tap out, but he might be ready to be pinned. Grabowski focusing on the arm, though. I don't know if he's going to go for the cover. 
Here he is. One, two, two, Baron. Did you see that? I saw that. Here is your winner, dude, Grabowski. There is no way Baron is going to be happy with that result. That was absolutely a rope break. You could play that back. You could show a replay. Baron grabbed the bottom rope and the ref counted a three. That technically should have broken up the pin, but the ref did not see it and counted the full three. Baron is going to be furious with that result. That is a controversial victory. The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring first, from Tacoma, Washington, Bob Licious. That's right, folks. The first tag team match of season two is happening right now. Well, normally her partner would be Roz, but Roz is the number one contender for the women's title tonight. Roz is a title shot, so she's not in this match. Impressive. Bob has to be stuck with another partner for tonight. But who's it gonna be? tag team partner making her way to the ring from Fort Morgan, Colorado Lana Del Grey Bob Licious and Lana Del Grey will tag up for this match Yeah, apparently we got Team Kilt here. But who will they face off with? opponents making her way to the ring first from Chicago, Illinois, Minx, Jinx. Minx ready to throw down in this tag team match. I think she might have looked for the big guns to help out with this one. And her tag team partner making her way to the ring from the Ocean of Stars, 
Katie Peter Slays. The Space Shark will team with Minx Jinx for this. Some interesting team ups tonight that we normally don't see. And again, our first tag team match of season two. Let's see how it goes. There's the bell. Remember, only one person from each team can be legal in the ring at one time. They need to tag out. There's the cover from Minx already and a one count. Lana Del Grey having some confidence in her partner. She didn't step in to help out. A tag needs to be made like this. Minx going over. Tagging in the Space Shark. They'll switch places. Katie Peters now the legal wrestler in the ring. Only the legal wrestlers can be pinned or forced to tap. The partners must wait on the apron, but they don't always follow the rules. Katie with another pin. One count. Normally you want to get the person you're wrestling over to your own corner and away from their partner so their partner can't step in and break up the pin. It's not really legal for them to do so, but they do it all the time. They do technically have a five count before their team is disqualified to get back to their corner and out of the ring. Lana Del Grey looking for that cover. Oh, sorry, looking for that tag as Katie going after the leg. Yet again, Keeping the focus on the leg of Bob Licious. Bob with a long stretch in the level up rumble earlier tonight. Don't know how much steam she has left in the tank. Bob though starting to gain momentum, sending Katie into the corner. This is a good strategy, keeping them away from their opponent, isolating. Generally, you want to bring them over to your own corner, like I was saying before. It's a good place to get quick tags as well. Lana Del Grey has yet to have any action in this match. Bob taking KPS to town at the moment. But before she runs out of too much steam, wisely tagging in her, her partner. Lana's finally stepping into the match and goes right for the cover for nothing. Too long of a delay there. <laughs> Lana's so upset that her pin was absolutely worthless that she immediately tags out of the match and Bob walks right into a DDT before tagging Minx back in. <laughs> Minx going for the cover after that DDT from Katie getting a two count on Bob Minx and Katie appear to be working together as a team much better oh no Bob Lucius with the pouch punch Katie drops to the outside that rope break the ref sees Minx grabbing the rope before two the ref catches it that time. That talk I had with him backstage apparently paying off. Minx driven to the mat as Bob walks over to the corner, making the tag to Lana Del Grey. Lana actually going for some offense this time. If she's smart, she's going to try and take the action out of the corner. You don't want to be within punching range of the other team's corner. Because Katie's going to lay one in while the ref isn't looking if you're not careful. Lana sending Minx outside to the apron. Minx with the punch. There's the kick. The kick sending Minx Jinx to the outside. If things go out of the ring during a tag match, it can get a little chaotic. Looks like Lana will take the opportunity to tag in Bob. The count continuing on Minx.
Bob getting the fist ready and Minx all the way back in the ring, bringing Bob over to their corner. Slammed in there. Are we looking for a tag team double team here? We might be. Minx with the foot chokes. Getting Bob back up. We're up for the suplex and Bob slips over the top. Reverses with a German suplex. Now we're getting all sorts of tagging action happening in this match. Both wrestlers are, uh, trying to stay as fresh as possible. Lana going down into the submission hold. Trying to get Minx to tap. Someone's running by there in the back. Oh, Katie Peters enters the ring to break up the hold. She doesn't want to see that tap. The ref is starting to count her. She has a count of five to get out before they're disqualified. Minx with the hit on Lana, but Lana kicking right out of the pin. Uh-oh, Minx doesn't want to be celebrating right now. There's an atomic drop into a splash. Lana with the cover, one. Katie comes in and breaks it up at two. Lana now fighting Katie. There's a two count. Katie getting out of the ring yet again. There's another tag. Bringing Boblicious back into the ring. Ooh, a pile driver on Minx Jinx and then the cover. One, two, Katie again with the flying save. But Bob has had enough and tosses the Space Shark from the ring, leaving her and Minx alone now, but now sending Minx over the top. There's the stun gun, which drops her to the outside. Lana Del Grey is there waiting, and here's your chaos, folks. Here's your chaos. It doesn't matter right now who's legal and who's not. Lana Del Grey appears to be waiting for Minx Jinx to get back up as Bob attacking the non-legal partner in this match. Katie blocking that punch, going for the kick, trying to get back over to her corner. Bob sends her across the floor. Minx slowly making her way back up. Bob and Minx are the legal ones here. Minx blocking the punch. We're at a six count. Sending Bob back of the head first on the mat. There's the seven. There goes Bob into the barricade as Minx finds her way back into eight. Will Bob be counted out? Will Bob be counted out? There's nine. Bob getting in just in time before the 10. Power slam on Minx Jinx. Followed by the leg drop. Rolling over into the pin. One, two. Here are your winners, the team of Boblicious and Lana Del Grey. They stand victorious. Winners of our first tag team match of season two. A hard fought victory. The following contest is the men's level up rumble. Every 60 seconds, another superstar will enter the ring until only one remains who will earn this week's level up. Making his way to the ring first as entrant number one from Germany, whatever Trevor.
Zen is always watching, studying the fighters when not in the match, as he should be. That's what a good champion does. Champion's got to keep an eye on the competition, for sure. Trevor coming in at number one. We saw Bob with an impressive showing at number one in the earlier Rumble. Will Trevor be capable of the same? There is but one way to know. That is to watch and find out. Making his way to the ring as entrant number two from the farmlands of Canada, the Spud. We have like repeated entrances from earlier tonight where it was Trevor versus the Spud for the number one contenders match. Spud came out victorious in that one. So Trevor is going to be looking for some vengeance, I think. But they have 60 seconds before they get interrupted. And I don't think Spud's an easy one to toss over the top rope. There is the bell. Starts off just the way it did before with Spud just shoving Trevor away. But Trevor coming back, hitting the rope. Spud's right there trying to put him over the top already. Bouncing him back and forth across the rope or into the rope. Blocking the hits. Scoops him up. He's got him up top. Drops him on the top rope face first. Few kicks, Trevor trying to get some offense in there, but Spud stopping all attempts. There's the takedown from Trevor. Getting Spud back to his feet. And entrant number three will be down that ramp in just a moment. And the Baron coming in at number three. Baron probably in a foul mood. After what happened in his singles competition with Dude Grabowski, Baron robbed of potential victory. There's a spinning clothesline taking Trevor down. Spud with a little bit of a dance, but Baron not wasting any time with that elbow. Trevor is down. Baron bringing the Spud over to the ropes, looking for elimination. There it goes. Bye bye, Spud. Baron and Trevor now. I have a feeling like Baron's gonna be unleashed from his cage in this match. What's up, Shuck? Baron with the shove off. Man, Trevor can't get close to any of these guys. They just keep pushing him away. There's the Insiguri. Yeah, Baron's a bat out of hell right now. Avatar X at number four. It looked like Baron was going for the power bomb, but Trevor with the counter. Trevor set up on the ropes. Baron was looking to eliminate, but Avatar X interferes. Baron is not having it though. Taking Avatar X down. Trevor still in a precarious position on the ropes there. Has time to get off thanks to Avatar X. Might have saved him. Baron puts legs into the arm. Face first goes Trevor. Yeah. 
Baron is just letting everything rip this match so far. Countering everything, keeping the offense flowing. Trevor falls off the back, takes Baron down with a chop block. Oh, and a boot to Avatar X. And number five, Dude Grabowski. Baron's gonna be waiting for him. Dude sliding into the ring. Trevor sent face first, and Baron unleashes on Grabowski. No surprise there. As soon as he steps in, just a right hand to the face. Grabowski starting to fight back now, though. He's not a pushover, that's for sure. Dude now looking at Avatar X as Trevor is focused on Baron. And Baron with the clothesline eliminating Trevor. He's eliminated two in this match so far. Grabowski has Avatar X up on the top, but Avatar X fights out of it. Baron turning his attention to Grabowski with that German suplex. And Shock will arrive at number six. The big man comes down to the ring. Baron with a huge clothesline on X. Shock focused on Dude. And Avatar X sent over and there's the hip and Baron has eliminated three now. Baron is the only one that's eliminated people from this match so far. And he's taken out three. Shuck now though focused on Baron. It looked like Shuck was trying to eliminate Dude, but Baron might not be done with him yet and stop the elimination. But Shuck is not happy about it. Up and over, Baron goes. Dude with the spine buster. And then the DDT on Baron as number seven, Big Guiler, enters the match. Dude with the punches, he's had enough out of Baron. He's sick of this little revenge plot. But Guiler taking down Dude. This might set a record for shortest rumble ever. I don't know. We've seen pretty short before. In season one, though. For this season, it might be. Uh-oh, Baron firing up right now. He still wants to go after Dude. Can't blame him. But Dude is laying him in. Big elbow from Beguiler on Shuck. Grabowski bringing Baron over to the ropes. Oh no, oh no. He goes for the clothesline. He missed the first one, but connected with the second. Baron's gonna be doubly pissed off now. Baron has been eliminated by Dude Grabowski as Squash Job Johnson comes in at number eight. Four men in the ring. Dude hits the ropes, takes down. But Guiler with a clothesline. Shuck is focused on squash right now. He can't get pinned in this match. You mean throw me, pay me. But Guiler taking a moment to celebrate. That might not be wise. Dude's right there. Oh, Shuck just dropping squash on his face. Double choke. And we have, oh, there's a boss man slam, I believe, on Guile. As Squash takes Shuck down. Number nine, Brando Commando. Dude Grabowski going for the pile driver. Why does he have a tombstone? That ain't right.
Brando Commando in at number nine. There's the kick to dude's face. Now I know who 10 is. Backbreaker on Beguiler as Shuck is focused on Brando Commando. Dude sending Squash up and over. Tossing him from the middle of the ring. This is not the match for Squash Job. <laughs> throw him, dough him. <laughs> no pin me, pay me. Just throw him, dough him. And Brando Commando tossed by Dude Grabowski. We have three left as Rob Impact comes in at number 10. Impact sliding into the ring. Hashtag rigged. Beguiler taking Impact down immediately. Dude focused on Shuck. Oh, Grabowski has been busted open by Shuck. Beguiler with that flipping kick on Impact. Impact has yet to get any offense in here. He's going to hit the standing moonsault on Dude. Beguiler's back up to his feet. Shuck laying in that hard right hand. DDT on Grabowski. Shuck just repeatedly standing Beguiler up only to knock him right back down. He's caught in a loop of right hands. Dude fighting back on impact. What's up, Deuce? How are you? Welcome on in. There's the knee on impact. Shuck has brought Beguiler over to the corner, but dude interfering. Impact has rolled to the apron to get a breather. Grabowski going for those kicks to the midsection. And then the clothesline takes down Shuck. Impact trying to force Beguiler to the top. And Grabowski is eliminated. Shuck, we are down to three. Final three in the rumble here. There's a German suplex on Impact. Dude and Beguiler now facing off. There's another backbreaker from Dude. Beguiler catches the leg. There's the dragon screw. Stands him back up just to roll him and kick to the face. Oh, before quickly refocusing on impact and tossing him over his head and then spins around into the clothesline. Beguiler is on fire going back and forth between both men. Setting Dude up for the elimination. There's the big boot and Dude is gone. It is down to Beguiler and Impact. Which is going to prove interesting for later tonight. No doubt. Again, you can't write this stuff. It just happens magically. Impact is down. Beguiler, though, getting him back to his feet. He's probably going to look for an elimination soon. There's the dragon suplex. And Beguiler with that quick suit to the <laughs> suit. Quick salute to the crowd. Sending Impact up and over. There's the hip. Here is the winner of the men's Level Up Rumble, The Big Guiler. Big Guiler picks up this week's Level Up as if he needs it.
The following contest is a triple threat match scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring first, from the Netherlands, Aurora J. Always in favor of more monitors. Same. Same. But we got to make sure they're locked in. Making her way to the ring next. From the city of Bloodhaven. Kim Phoenix. Oh, yeah, Laura's got the Wrestling Generation shirt on. I will check that out. I will check that out. Bum, 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 bum. And their opponent. Making her way to the ring from Dodge City, Bronco Lily. Yeah, that's it, says the crowd. Who inspired Kim Phoenix? Yeah, you can totally ask that. So, um, obviously, Kim Phoenix is my representation in the women's division because I didn't want... You can say, oh, my God, Rob gets two wrestlers. He gets one in each division. But the reason for that is if I was stuck in one division, then wrestlers in the other division might be like, well, I never get to wrestle the streamer. So I thought it was only fair to do that. <laughs> She's kind of hot. Um, as far as the look goes, uh, the look kind of came together based on the color scheme of Rob Impact. Um that's why the red hair, red and black has always kind of been my color scheme. And the look I just kind of pieced together from different things I found. Uh, face paint to kind of go after. Uh, I used to wear a wrestling mask too. Pele kick from Kim Phoenix. Holy crap. Uh, but the name, the name is a combo of two things. One, Phoenix is because on both the, the Rob Impact symbol, the bird symbol is a Phoenix. Uh, it's on her tights and it's on Rob Impact's pants and hoodie. Um, so that's where the Phoenix part comes from. And when I was going to start, when I started wrestling, I actually wanted my name to be Rob Phoenix. But there was already a Ken Phoenix that was in the same indie circuit. So I didn't take that last name because someone was already using it. Uh, so that's why Kim Phoenix is Phoenix for a last name. And as far as Kim for a first name, I found out years and years and years ago that my parents actually had a, uh, a girl's name picked out if I were to end up being born a girl. So obviously my name's Rob, but if I was a girl, my name would have been Kimberly. So because of that, I've always kind of like kept the name Kim as like a, a little side thing. So. That's that's where Kim Phoenix's name comes from. Comes from. There you go. Phoenix taking down Bronco Lily. Kick to the face there. And I've always liked the um the goth slash emo look. Or like goth slash emo slash punk look on girls. So Phoenix has a bit of that too. <laughs> Shotgun drop kick to Bronco Lily as Aurora Jade is on the outside. Kim taking a moment to celebrate before getting Lily back to her feet. Bridging suplex as Aurora Jade rolls back in. Hashtag wrestle lore, yeah. 
Look at the kicks there. There's a cover from Jade on Phoenix. Two, two count. Two count on Phoenix. Remember, this match ends at the first fall. So whether it be a submission or the first pin, you don't have to be pinned to lose this match. You could be on the outside and one of your opponents gets pinned. It is first fall. Lily laying it into Aurora Jade. Lily with the cover. Phoenix goes to break it up because again, as I mentioned, it is first fall. So if you look at the back, if you look at, um, this is one of the physics clothing glitches I was talking about. In the prior game, Phoenix had the same shirt on and it was normal. But if you look at her back when she stands up, there's like there's two divots in the back of her clothing for some reason, like two cutouts that are there purely as a physics glitch, like a clipping thing. I think the shirt's actually going like into her skin and it's breaking the shirt a little bit, which is unfortunate. I do hope they fix that for the next game so I can use the same attire. Bronco Lily with the cover. Aurora Jade kicks out though. Yeah, and the size of the holes in the back of her shirt change based on her movement. So it's like clipping into her body. Parents thought you might have been a boy when your mom was pregnant and they had a boy and girl name picked out just in case. And their name for me if it had been a boy would have been Robert. Interesting. <clears throat> My name wasn't supposed to be Robert, actually. My dad's name is also Robert, but I'm not a junior because we have different middle names. My name was supposed to be... Oh, look at that drop down. Phoenix up and over, grabs the legs. Nice combo on Aurora Jade. My name was actually supposed to be Michael Robert. Robert was supposed to be my middle name. And then, what is it? Two weeks, either two weeks or two months. I forget what it was. Um, before I was born, my grandfather, my grandfather on my mom's side passed away right before I was born. And they took his first name and made it my middle name. They bumped Robert from my middle name up to my first name and they threw Michael out. The name that was supposed to be my first name, the one that I thought was primary, the priority name, they completely tossed out. So that's the only reason my first name is Robert. It was supposed to be my middle name for my dad. Lily back up. Jade taking her down. Lily looks broken as Kim Phoenix is sitting on the outside. This is a good opportunity for a pin. I don't know if Phoenix would get back in in time. Jade is hooking the arm and looking for a submission hold here though. It was just meant to be your name that is apparently. Phoenix going for the pin right in front of Jade. That's ballsy. Gotta know that was gonna get broken up. Fall away, hold. Oh, Jade letting it go. I thought that was gonna be held for a pin. Parents were told you were gonna be a girl so they didn't have any boy names picked out. So I had to come up with one the day I was born. Oh, wow. So they dropped the mic. They really did, that's funny. I think Michael was one of my dad's friend's name. That's where that came from. One, two. Here is your winner, Aurora J. Aurora Jade picking up a hard-fought win in that triple threat match. Well done. Well done.
The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring first from Southwest Iowa, Squash Job Johnson. Keeping the clean tights, keeping the clean tights. Tag team partner, making his way to the ring from Wesley Chapel, Florida, Shock. If I'm not mistaken, it was Shuck who eliminated Squash Job Johnson from the Rumble, making this an interesting pair. And again, you can't write this stuff. You just can't. It's too good on its own. Elbow dropping the ads with a sub. <laughs> Wait, did you sub? Or did you not trigger it? I didn't get an alert. There's no alert. That's weird. And their opponents making his way to the ring first from Las Vegas, Nevada. The Big Guiler. Uh, when you chatted earlier, there was no sub. So I'm assuming that was weird. I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah, nothing even popped up in the activity feed. I don't know. But if you did sub, thank you. <laughs> Which be weird sometimes. Salute. tag team partner making his way to the ring from the city of Bloodhaven Rob Impact and this was the final two in the rumble but Guyler and Impact so the rumble affects this match in multiple ways. Both people ta uh, teaming up with the one who eliminated them. So we'll have to see how these teams get along. But we also have team veteran versus team rookie as far as season one and season two goes. Shuck and Squash both new as of season two. Impact and Beguiler, both veterans. If, uh, what is he busted open already? Are you kidding me? 
Squash job busted open on the turnbuckle on like the first move. He's got a glass jaw and a glass forehead. Unbelievable. Look at that scuff mark on his face. Oh my God. Squash throwing impact to the outside. If, uh, if Squash comes into this match with a pin me, pay me attitude, I don't think Shuck's going to like that too much. Squash sending impact into the barricade as we're at a three count. This is the furthest up the ramp that anyone's gone mid-match so far. They're going to have a run back to that ring as we're already at a five count. Squash might be looking to get that five count. What is happening right now? Squash with the run back to the ramp or back to the ring at the seven count. Oh, he reset the count. That doesn't seem too smart to me. Cement doesn't feel too good, so I've heard. Backbreaker on Squash. Squash with the arm drag. Gets impact back up. He's heading over to the ring, but maybe not. Turns around for the chop. Impact catching the leg. Throwing Squash job back into the ring. He's going to walk over. Oh, there's a hot tag to Shuck. He walks into the right hands of Impact. Impact trying to take out the leg and take down the big man. But Shuck tosses him up and over onto the apron at least. Impact. Oh, a flipping neck breaker. That springboard neck breaker goes over the top of Shuck. And then a knee to the face. There's the tag to Beguiler. And a fresh Beguiler steps into the ring with a little bit of saluting action. I hear, uh, like an action figure, he's got a little lever on his back that you can pull down and get that saluting action. Beguiler has busted open Shuck now for the one count. Beguiler's just making everybody bleed in this match. Tosses squash job to the outside before locking in an interesting hold on Shuck. Stepped around the back of him. He just bounced right off of my nose. That was hilarious. <laughs> Chuck with the counter into the right hand. Sends Beguiler into the corner. Squash is there. I thought he was going to go after him, but he's heading back to his corner. Beguiler dropped on the turnbuckle. This is a bloodbath, ladies and gentlemen. Chuck forcing Beguiler down to his knees. Makes the tag to Johnson. Johnson, it's not even like a blood mark. It's just a scuff across his face. It's almost like he took a boot to the face and the prince stayed there. It looks hilarious. The punches to Beguiler. He got pooped on. Boop. Beguiler sweeps the leg. Getting the crowd behind him. Squash is there waiting with the bevy of punches and the DDT on Beguiler. This might be the most impressive we've seen Squash job so far. The tag to Impact. Impact comes in with the flying forearm and the pin on Squash. No count. DDT. Short distance to go, but still effective. Standing moonsault connects. Impact grabs the hold. Shuck watching. Having some sort of confidence in his partner to not go in and break that up. 
Squash with the knees, gets himself out of it. Goes for the kick, Impact catches it, spins him around. Squash has him though, wrestles him down to the mat. I think that was like a reversal of a reversal. Interesting sequence. Shuck is tagged back into the match. Impact goes under. Face to the knee and goes for the cover here. One, only a one count. He's going to the outside. He looks, oh, he only got a piece of that springboard clothesline. Only a piece, I don't know if that's enough. Ducks under, Pele kick to the face. It doesn't take him down though, he's a big guy. The Hurricane Rana will though. Tag made to Beguiler. Impact and Beguiler doing a nice job working as a team here. Beguiler locks in a crossface like hold, but there's a rope break and immediately tags Impact back in. That's surprising. Impact is going up top. He might be looking for the Swanton Bomb. He is. Oh, Shuck gets the knees up. Shuck gets the knees up and counters the Swanton. Gut wrench power bomb. Goes for the cover. One count. Impact kicking out at the one after the power bomb. Squash coming in. Kicking the leg out from under him into the short DDT. Goes for the cover. One, two, two. Neither team wants to double team their opponent. I guess not. And nobody's really coming in to break up pins yet. Shocking. Everyone's kind of playing by the rules. I'm dumbfounded. Oh, there's a big boot. Big boot to impact. Two. Here are your winners, the team of Squash Job Johnson and Shuck. I can't believe they won. I can't believe they won. I feel robbed. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the WG Women's Championship. Making her way to the ring first, the challenger from Boston, Massachusetts, Ruthless Roz. opponent making her way to the ring from England she is the WG women's champion princess L
Women's Championship on the line. Your challenger once again. Roz fired up and ready to go. And your defending WG Women's Champion. Heard some boos in there. Both of them, actually. <laughs> Big match, big match. There's the bell. Roz coming out of the corner strong. Oh, massive slam on Princess L. Followed up by that leg drop. And a series of stomps going for the quick pin, hoping for the quick win. One count on the champion. It's going to take more than that, but that's okay. That's to be expected. Not enough to deter Roz right now. Roz locking in a hold, putting pressure on the back. They'd make a great tag team. Don't tell that to Bob. Bob will get pissed. <laughs> Oh, a slap! A series of slaps from the champion. Missed that last kick there, though. And it's enough for Roz to find an opening. Tosses the champ from the ring. Stomp to the arm. Roz is showing everybody that fist. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you. Bob's up in here now. We're at a four count already. Remember, the belt cannot change hands on a count out. It's going to be up to the challenger to get Princess L back in the ring or just get in and break up the count. It would not be smart to stay and wait, though. You do not want a count out here. Ref is making sure. Seven. Seven. Champ slowly getting back to her feet. Eight. Makes it back in just in time. Roz catching the hand. A headbutt. Now Princess L catching it. And slapping her across the face. Seeing a lot of mirrored moves in this match so far. Oh, a toss. Now the punches. Stomp to the arm. Everybody appears to be working different limbs here. Princess L going for the cover. Nothing. Stomp to the back of Roz. The champion getting fired up, finding her inner motivation. Sends Roz into the corner. Shop across the chest. Plants her in place. What's she looking for here? She's going up for a splash, it looks like. Oh, Roz with the knees. Roz with the knees. There's the counter. Roz has her up. Look at the strength of Ruthless Roz turning around while keeping her in the air. Look at that massive suplex. Backbreaker and then a clubbing blow from behind. Roz hits the rope. Oh. 
Maybe hits the ropes at some point. Maybe. M m maybe. We're going for going for a Forrest Gump run today. We, we, we doing the Forrest 500? There we go. There's the ropes and there's the drop kick. <laughs> Roz is going to be blown up now. Roz hitting the backbreaker. Oh, ho, 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 ho. and then the kick afterwards. One, two. Here is your winner and new WG Women's Champion, Ruthless Roz. A new champion is crowned. Princess L unfortunately taking the L. Roz stepping into the limelight as our new women's champion. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the Wrestling Generation Championship. Making his way to the ring first, the challenger from Reshnov, Romania, Iron Fist. And his opponent making his way to the ring from Seattle, Washington. He is the Wrestling Generation Champion, Zen. Darby the belt. Iron Fist ready to go. He's got no nonsense in his face. He came to fight. And the defending champion the pain sponge himself, Zen. He might need that pain sponge ability tonight. Challenger gets a good look at that belt before it is raised up high. And that is what is on the line. I like when the ref holds the uh, belt up, like one day this will be mine, all mine, yeah. He's gotta get in the ring first. There's the bell, the lockup iron fist. 
Grabbing first offense, setting Zen up in the tree of woe. Interesting start to the match. Goes right for the face. Iron Fist showing just how serious he is in this match. And a cover already. One count, two. Zen grabbing the rope on the two count. What was that? Interesting way for this match to begin. I don't know if Zen is uh, at the top of his game right now. He's got to get back in here. His mind is outside the ring, but he's got to bring it back in. That DDT might do it. Zen finding some momentum to start things off. Either that or he's just playing with his opponent. You never know. One, two, two count on Iron Fist. What is going on? This is crazy. Zen stepping up. Oh, Zen's going to the legs. You don't want him locking in submissions this early. But he's got the leg hold in on Iron. Iron fighting out of it as he does. Smack to the face of Zen to get out of that hold. You don't want Zen to be able to hold that for too long. Weaken your legs and get you all supple for the sharpshooter. That wasn't quite a figure four. It was close. Usually in a figure four, you stay on your back. It was a modified. Yeah, the ref saw that rope grab too. Like I said, he had to learn his lesson early. I gave him a reaming out backstage. So now he's catching every rope break. Good combo right there from Iron Fist. Zen kicking out of it. Fighting back strong. There's the lock. Iron tossed into the corner. Zen's right there. Now setting him up in the tree of woe. Going with the same idea as Iron Fist. Almost showing like, hey, anything you can do, I can do better. This is a mental game as much as it is a physical one. Zen with that flipping neck breaker. Kick to the midsection. Gets him back to his feet. And he's flipping into the sunset flip. He holds it. One, two. Here is your winner and still wrestling generation champion. Zen. Zen retaining his title in a fairly quick contest much faster than I expected. Puts Iron Fist away and remains champion.